uh, Wednesday, May 30th, and we are back after a long holiday weekend. Um, I'm Lori Fay. I'm Christine McCauley. I hope you all had a great week. Thank you for joining us. Um, before we start to chat, and we have so many things to talk about, I please would like to remind all of you to follow us on Instagram, like our Facebook page, The Living Room Radio Show, and if you hear us talking about anything that you have an opinion about, please call in, 516-945-9099. And just to get the party started, as usual, this is not a sober show. So we are ready to pour. I hope you are too, because it's Wednesday in the house. What do you got today? A Pinot? Well, this, this is a Josh. It's uh, a Josh, Sauvignon I their, Blanc. Okay, I love that cap. But the truth of the matter is it's a, it's a screw-off, but I had to use my eight inches for something tonight, so I used it to fake phony fraud. Um, I'm yeah, going to pass. You're drinking coffee. Um, yeah. That's okay. I get it. Cheers to the freaking weekend. Open that, your wine, everyone. Is that funny? Because um, I was off on Friday. I took off. And then off on Monday, and I have to tell you, years ago, I could do a four-day weekend and, and roll into Tuesday like it was no problem. I'm going to tell you right now, I, like, literally crawled my sorry ass through Tuesday. It took me 11 hours to get through six hours at work. I literally wanted to blow my head off. It's tough to get old. But I did it. Um, so Old habits, so right? Here we, you know what it is? I mean, I'm, I'm not partying like the way I used to party. At the end of the day... You know, if I had three glasses of wine, it's taking me that long to recover. So basically, I'm old. But um, so I feel like on hump day, I'm getting ready for this weekend. So here I go. And I just want to point out that I did not have implants. It just looks like I did. It's out of control. It's good wine. So was it a good weekend at least? Did you have fun? I had I a great. You had a house full on Sunday in the rain, right? I had a great weekend, and I have to tell you, you know what? Some people post stuff on Facebook that's absolutely FOS, otherwise known as full of poop. Um, I have great friends. I don't have a lot of friends. I, I I, my way. circle is very small, but I have great friends in my life. We had such a great night. It was raining out. We were in the pool. I jacked that pool up to 103. It was like <laughs> one big jacuzzi, and we were all in all night. Who was cooking? Who was cleaning? Who brought dessert? Who put the flowers up? I really do have a great group of friends. And like Sounds I said, great. not a lot, but just perfect. enough to make a really fabulous dinner party, and nobody's looking to leave early. Terrific. So it was a great thing. And you were on a boat. I had my first weekend on my little boat. My dear friend Maria, some of you may remember, she was here when we did our show on um, uh, breast cancer. She called in, so she comes up a couple of times a year. We spent the weekend. Saturday was gorgeous. The Jones Beach Air Show. Oh, did it happen? Flies right, well, it was canceled on Sunday. Okay. Sunday's weather was, was like hurricane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Force winds. And I heard uh, that was like they only did that twice in the whole history of the air yeah. show. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I wasn't sure of that. We got Rob I, on I the board tonight. So uh, he's in the corner here taking care of us on the uh, social media and um, giving us the man's point of view here and there just to keep us real. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it was great. I loved the air show. My dad loved it. It reminds me of him. He was a pilot. So, you know, those jets going overhead, it's just, yeah, it is powerful. It, it's just the sound of freedom as far as I'm concerned and, and helps us all remember what Memorial Day is actually about. Yeah, um, I know. Land yeah. of the free because of the brave. So. Yeah, I know. You posted a lot. I'm so bad with that kind of stuff. Well, thank yeah. God you're good with it. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you a question. Everybody who knows me knows that I freaking hate being cold and I hate being miserable. I like being in the sun. I like sweating. I don't care how hot it is. You ever see that... Um, that, that uh, what was it called? What was that show, Twilight Zone? The one where it was like the guy was frying on the sidewalk <laughs> like an egg or you could freeze. <laughs> My like worst nightmare of dying is freezing to death. Like I would rather fry like an egg on the sidewalk. So this is getting me down. Uh, I was just wondering, like, is this getting anybody else down with this weather? Oh, it's just horrible. Me? It's horrible. I went out in boots again this morning. I, I thought it was freezing this morning. It turned out beautiful, but. We just need It's got to get the guys down because Summer. the guys don't want to see girls Summer. in boots. They want to see girls in thongs, in thongs, Chris, on the beach, <laughs> in sundresses. Nobody wants to see girls all bundled up. That's what magazines are for that, in New York. Yeah, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's like it's, it does get me down. The darkness. The darkness I, I'm ready is for the worst. Warm the sad. I have that. I have that sad syndrome. I have the, the sunlight yeah, on a, my there's desk. A word, there's a phrase for it. It's an actual syndrome. Yeah, it's sad. It's called people, sad. Does anybody is know it? what that stands for? Seasonal Affective, affective disorder or something oh, like that. Okay. It's like if you don't have sunlight. Okay. So I used to have the tall, um, the tall sun lamp over my spin cycle, and I would spin under it because I needed it. Now I just try to go to Florida every three weeks. I'm Everybody's really, vitamin D just has got wine. to be yeah, and in I the drink soil. Wine. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, because you know what? It's, it affects some people more than others. Like, I would get really severely depressed. More depressed than I get when I look at myself in the monitor on this set with this overhead lighter. Okay. Oh, come on. No, I think our lighting, Bobby's done, done a good a job great. softening yeah, us a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, really good. a lot of this yeah. has to do with our age, Lori. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, ain't, they ain't fighting it. <clears throat> well, You're listen, fighting it, but I saw it's happening. I just happened to go into the office a little late today, and I don't really watch morning TV, but I saw uh, Kelly Ripa. She and needs to eat a cookie. I can, you know what? So this is what we have to talk about. We have to be really honest about it because I'm not going to lie. I love Kelly Ripa, and I want to be as She's skinny fun. as Kelly no Ripa. Doubt. Mm. But, and I do. I like the bones popping out the ribs. No, I love it. No, no. And you the fact that her face is beautiful, but she's still really skinny, where she almost looks like she's on the verge of dying, I like that look. But there's no disorder in that at all. <laughs> I don't know how she does it. You love that so much. I she know. doesn't even look like she's hungry. She looks like she's fine. I see her and I'm like, how is she maintaining I her I, blood sugar I, I, have, have, with her rib cage hanging out? Have you like seen that? her in person? I've se I've seen her in person. No. She, talk about gaunt. I mean, she's, I like the she's look. Like I'm the, not gonna lie. She's, she's kind like of a last year old boy. I like it. Mm. I'm not going to lie. I want to be that skinny. I'm a girl with curves. I'm always going to have curves. So. I'm a girl with curves too, but I like her. I like the way she looks. Right. I know it's sick, but mm -hmm. I just wonder how she maintains it with her face still looking really healthy. She she clearly does not eat much. She does not eat a lot. There's no way. But, but she looks no happy. Way. So if it's working for her, it's working for her. Um, you know, which my question was, it, can you be too skinny? Absolutely. So, to people, oh, but I'm saying. Although, see, what's that old phrase? You can't be too rich or too thin? My thing is, like, I'm, I'm saying she's really skinny, but at the same time, I want to be her. So, there's like a two sided okay. thing with me. Well, you've often said that skinny is not fit, and you're 100% correct. No, I think it's not. she works out like an animal, she does. so she is probably fit. Yeah, she is really fit. She's got yeah. all that muscular stuff going yeah. on. I like it. So. Is, she's got no body fat. I'm interested to know, um, <clears throat> to know, Rob, if you're turned on by super skinny or, you know, I, we know you're accepting of all, but my point is, does Super Skinny turn you on, or do you just look at it and go, there's nothing to grab onto, I mean, blah, blah, blah. Well, what you were just describing doesn't sound, you know, rib cage, because like, you're not really overstating it. Or a woman walking around in the summer, it's just like, there's nothing there. you see bones. And you don't like that. I want bones. Yeah, no? Really, what's important, I think, is, you know, how, how, how good is your health insurance? <laughs> I thought you were going to say something about the personality, because everyone says it's the no, personality. No, really, no, it doesn't matter. I've, I've, um, no, I know I, you... I've explored being well, with all, all, all sizes and shapes of people in my life. But some people Women. are repulsed by skinny. Like, the big butt thing is a thing now. Yeah, I don't get that. And I don't want that, because I don't get that at all. that up over the age of 52, yeah. that's got to be a brutal thing to yeah. keep that thing off the floor. I, I, I don't know. know how J-Lo does I, it. I, I, don't, I don't get that. I, I, I don't see know how she does it. pictures sometimes... Well, well, they make products to actually give you a bigger button, and all I can think, as a person who used to be much heavier, all I can think of is, why on Listen, earth? I like my flat ass now. Well, you know what? I, it, the, the point to me is it looks good when you're young, but once you gain uh, that weight know. in that area, and then you have to do squats like 16 times a day to keep it up there, put, over the age of 50, there are no amount of squats that you can do this. Like a shirt on some floor. people. So, I mean, you could put a glass like, on and it only spill. I'm not opposed to it. I just don't want to maintain it myself. Yeah. I prefer less is more for me. So, I, I'm going to agree with you there. Yeah, so I yeah. want to. So, so listen, I'm gonna, I have to talk about this one thing. I have okay. to get it off my chest because it's really pissing me off. Um, I'm not going to say I hate Facebook because I like Facebook, right? I'm on Facebook all the time. I like to check what everybody's doing. I like to see what is everybody's doing. I keep connected to people that I would never keep connected to, like my grandmother's siblings and all that kind Absolutely. of stuff. Absolutely. But this thing where people are posting animal abuse videos is really pissing me off. But is it to raise awareness? I don't care what kind of awareness it's raising. You are actually giving these guys a platform and my so somebody told me about a video that was going around last week somebody told me about it and I actually said it to my son is this true people are showing this video and then I happened to scroll past it and I guess there's a feature on Facebook that you could shut off mm -hmm. that the video doesn't go on right. oh, I, need really? to I need to shut, I need that, to off shut that off because too. I saw part of the video and I'm damaged for life and anybody who knows me knows how I love my animal and how I love animals and all of that and I, I, I can't sleep I, th I can look at my dog and I'm like how could someone do this to an animal and yes I know People are abusing children. People are abusing cats. I know that. But people posting this crap on Facebook, there's yeah. got to be something we you can know, do about I, it. I, I think it's all about awareness, and, and people are trying to let those who don't know that this really exists outside of the yeah, little box really that surrounds happening? them. 
So it's on Facebook. I saw it. I'm damaged for life. Okay. What's happening to those guys that did it? What's you're happening? You're giving no validity at all to her side of it. None. Well, because I'm it, saying it is why they're putting it up on Facebook. Yeah. To, I to mean, one would, hope, one would hope that it's that not to it get Lori Fay upset. I'm upset over it. Yeah. I'm very upset well, over it. One, one would hope it's that somebody will sit up and say, "Oh my gosh, what can I do to prevent this from happening?" Yeah, but what can That's you do? Hope. Give me a link to so, somewhere so, where I can t buy a bullet to shoot like the that? guy who did the damage. Sometimes it's a video that somebody posted, and the, and other people post say. Help us find this guy. All right, right. Well, yeah. posted it on Facebook. That's you know a I mean? different story. That's a different story. But you're right. You turn it off. You can turn off that feature. You won't have to. You won't have to see. It. Oh, I yeah. saw a horrific video about uh, this little baby girl crying in pain, covered in what was a rash, and it turned out was it was a staph infection from diaper rash, and her entire body was covered. And, what and it was brutal. It was absolutely who posted it? brutal. Mother? I don't know who posted. It's Someone to raise shared awareness, it. Though. And it. Uh. Well, I'm I think, joking. I'm, I'm joking. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm well, kidding. no, I, I, I think it's to say, oh my God, look what could happen mm -hmm. if. Oh, to my God. well, that's a different story. And, and maybe it educates people in a very horrific way. It's the same thing with the, the uh, cigarette ads and showing these people very ill from smoking cigarettes, or um, the Indian back in the day with the litter, and there he is walking this beautiful country with the tear no, down his face. So I it's don't all know. about it's shocking a whole people. It's level when you see a dog being. Hit with a blowtorch, okay? I didn't well, want to repeat it, but now I just repeated it. Certainly. So I'm just telling you right now, I think that there should be some kind of warning before those things come up, and mm -hmm. there should be a better way to manage what we can do to help them. Because my Loli, I would never want anything to happen to my Loli. Of That's course. crazy. Lola's going to come on as a guest next week. I'm bringing her on. <laughs> we so, it with so, so my question to Rob, because he's, because he's on the board right now, and he's on the stool, and he's hanging with us. When women talk about this stuff, does it make you insane, or do, or do you feel like these are discussions men have, or is it all like scratching the crotch and talking about like next week's Playboy magazine? Like, what do guys talk about? That was the longest sentence I've heard in like a year. <laughs> so everything that you're talking about, like just in general? Yeah. Is it boring? Is it all hell to you? No, it's not. I mean, you know, are you learning anything? Every once in a while, we'll hold up nine pictures of women because of the way they look, and I'm like, all right, I get it. <laughs> I got, I got it twelve pictures ago, but no. It's not really boring. I mean, uh, what you just discussed was, was, I think, important. And I think the b biggest point you made was the last thing you just said. There should be a warning. Yeah. The, you mm -hmm. should be able to unveil it if you want to watch each one of those videos. Yeah. As, yeah. as well as a lot of other stupid stuff going on on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. But no, you guys talk about stuff that's current and important. And and it's affecting us. And I wouldn't want my nine-year-old kid to come across that video. No. And I don't know what people are doing with their parents, with so you know, with their kids with social media. I mean, how do you prevent your kids from seeing stuff like this? I, mean, I am human, so every once in a while, you guys will be talking about something that I've never experienced, never will experience, and ever. And, now, you and all of a sudden, I'm like, you glaze over. There's something shiny over there. Well, this is. <laughs> and you say my boobs look big. I'm like, okay, I'm out. You're back. It, gets you, it reels you right back in. I remember when my kids were little, and everyone said, "Oh, you know, you can't let them have Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto." That was a big thing, and everyone was like, "My kids will never have it. They all had it." Well, I, I, along those lines, I refused to ever buy them. When they got to an age where they were, I, I don't remember the age, I, it was really my youngest who was yeah. into that kind of thing, um, where it just really was. You can't control uh, you it. You couldn't control it anymore. I refused to buy it. Yeah. I drew a line in the sand and said I, I will I gave, no longer I think, buy it. I think I gave money so. at one point to one of my kids and they bought it. Yeah. So listen, we got PC on the board, we got Rob on the stool, we got Rudy in the house, and we have Judy Wolski, my right hand, my, my, I don't know what I would do without her. We will be back in just a minute. Rob on the stool, sounds like a... <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get. You How'd you date go last night? How'd you, you date go last night? Gave her a Rob on the stool. <laughs> Hi, I'm Roger. And I'm Steve. And, and we, we own, own this house, house together. together. Zap My Tax was so successful with our tax grievance. We saved over $1,700 in our first year alone. But now we're signing up again. In fact, we are so happy with Zap My Tax, we decided to save even more money and use Zap My Insurance as well. Zap My Tax and Zap My Insurance. Two great choices and two great ways to save money. Hey, welcome back to the living room. How is everyone doing? Rob Sivaganis has joined us on the couch. Lori's here. And we are going to do Christine's Corner now. All right, tell me what you got. I know it involves alcohol. Okay, well, I'm well, there were two days. The National Calendar Day. I always like to check uh, and see if there's anything interesting that I can 
sort of focus Christine's corner on, and today there were two, so I, I had to go with it. Um, it's National Mint Julep Day. Mint juleps, if you've never had one, are the official cocktail of Churchill Downs in the Kentucky Derby, and it is a delicious drink. It is a big girl drink. Um, it is. Bourbon, water, I used agave instead of sugar, but you can use a little bit of sugar. Uh, crushed mint leaves, little mint garnish, top it off with some seltzer for a little bit of fizz, and you have a really nice cocktail. I am so glad I if had a protein bar here. you can see it down here. here. Uh, do you want to try it? Of course I want to try it. Okay, here you go. What the hell, are you kidding here me? You go. Uh, it's a pretty so drink, too. Uh, so the recipe oh, will be I, on the delicious. website tonight. Yeah. Sorry, Rob, that you're sober. Um, sorry, Rob. Don't be sorry I'm sober. Sorry, sorry, Rob. No, you know I'm only kidding. <laughs> Uh, but I didn't even make. Rob on the stool would be much different if it wasn't so. I, I didn't even make um, bourbon face because normally when you drink bourbon, well, scotch, you're like, that that'd be the agave. It, it's definitely oh, it's sweet. Delish. I once ordered a Southern Comfort Old Fashioned in a bar, and they didn't put the sugar in it. I might as well have taken a slug of battery acid. Really, so you definitely need this the sweet. This is absolutely delicious. I know PC is going to want to taste it. Well, there is a little bit really in the good. back uh, if uh, anybody wants to try or. Feel How strong is this? this feels, it feels like I could do like three um, of these with no the, problem and the end up. The picture you know, was a cup, a cup of bourbon, <laughs> a cup of water. So it's it's not too bad. It was like a half half, and of course the sweetener. This the is mint. absolutely. Listen, for those of you who don't um, follow Christine's Corner and go to the you know don't go to the Facebook page for her recipe, you're an idiot. She <laughs> posts some really good stuff, and it's all really easy, and it's all really delicious. I swear on my life, there's not one thing you have made that I haven't liked. Okay, well, and thank she, you, Lord. And, like, if you guys are thank eating you. clean or gluten-free or trying to, you know, lose weight or whatever, all the recipes that she has made have been light. They've been lighter versions of really fattening stuff. Even, like, what was that that she made? The pad thai, which was, like, the... Oh, it, it was a raw pad thai made with um, well, zucchini, you know, zoodles, people call them, julienne zucchini. Mm. Uh, wait a minute. And you made I'm the I'm trying to remember. I think I used... Butter. Yeah, actually, I think I used parsnip noodles for that one. I, I julienned a parsnip. It looks like a white carrot. Unbelievable. With carrots and things, and I made a uh, pad thai sauce using almond butter instead of peanut butter. And I made um, it for my son. And he it's actually, delicious. I, it's whenever delicious. I make a dish for I my love kids, it. oh, look, Rob, Rob okay. sees a shiny object. Okay. Um, well, you're going to love what so, I'm going to go well, into here, Well, Yeah, well, this is what we talk about. Oh, you're doing. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not quite finished yet. Oh. I told you they were two days. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, so I spat the day, what you thought. Um, I told you I have problems. It is. That's a very this good is big hot day drink. Very hot day. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. This is big for me when I saw this. It what? is National Creativity Day. Oh my God. Hello. Did you just make this? Well, no. <laughs> what I want to tell you all out there, so many people say to me, oh my God, you made this. Oh my God, you made this. You're so creative. You're so arti artistic. <laughs> I have an autistic son. I get the two words confused. You know what? All right. I I'll take it. I'm a little creative. But nothing, nothing I do is hard. hard. So, so Einstein, Einstein once, once said, creativity is intelligence having, having fun. fun. And that is how I look at it. It is fun Absolutely. for me to create, to work with my hands, whether it's food or shells or glue or paint. So I want to encourage everybody. It's National Creativity Day. Be creative. Be brave. Even if you think you're not good at it, attempt it. It doesn't take a lot, and it can only cost you a few dollars. You're not going to lose much. And what I wanted to show you is a few things I've done through the years that were inspired by other things that could be purchased. Um, the first thing is this shell lamp. Love that. You that made you that? see here. Yeah, I, I did, did not make that one. one. That okay. was my inspiration. Okay. You can buy that lamp on Wayfair.com for $337.50 on sale. Or, oh, I want to see this. You can oh, wow. get a $3 for thrift store lamp. A bag of shells that I happen to already have, some craft rope, and a glue gun, and you can put that together for about fifteen dollars in an hour or so of your time. And a bottle of wine. Okay. That is awesome. I'm, I'm making things, things for my little boat, boat right now. It's new to me this year, so that was one thing I made for the boat. The next thing was some art to hang. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's not the uh, shell art coming up. Next we have a galvanized sign that says "Eat." You, you can, can purchase, purchase this one from William Sonoma for $169.95. Okay? The Joanna Gaines Farm Modern Farmhouse yeah. book. These galvanized letters are very popular. So you can show that 
Or you can go to the craft store, buy some 99 cent letters, some silver paint, and some black paint. Do it up in about an hour or so, and it'll cost you $8. Oh my God. Okay. You want awesome. I keep telling her she needs to okay. go into this as a business. <laughs> Next up, that's actually in my dining room. That's on top of my hutch. Next up is the shell art that I just mentioned. Um, I wanted some, I had some wall space on the boat around the dinette. I had lots of shells from my trips to Captiva Island. And this was my inspiration. And you can get this shell art, um, shell art that you see here on Wayfair.com for $124.27. Are you kidding me? For those four little pictures. Oh my God. I bought four $2 canvases in a closeout store. They were shells I had. Some hot glue cost me $8 and took about 10 minutes. And there oh you go. My, That's the walls that on the dining On either side of the dining area on my little boat. That is okay. awesome. And the last thing I just had to bring up again because it was one of our most popular Christine's Corner. Oh. Um, Helmet Lang paint splattered jeans. Used $275. <laughs> We did a segment where we Crazy. painted them. We had Joanne Maxwell here on the couch, and they were a $4 pair of thrift store jeans. Paint I had, which you can buy the little and bottles. And they came out awesome. For 99 cents. I get compliments all the time. I've done four or five pair now. A dollar stiff brush from the dollar store, and for $5, I have jeans that I actually think look better than the helmet line. Yeah, they, they so. came out great. And she did like 10 pairs. I mean, I saw oh, you do. That was that a was, lot of talking for me. That's <laughs> awesome. She's done for the night now. That is How awesome. How much original so. those pants are? The helmet line brand was uh, used. $275 used. Really I think really originally, want. helmet line sold them for $1,200. Yeah. It's crazy. Is it just um, because I'm a woman of a certain no, age? No, it's very hot it's in like here. I'm melting in here. Well, Christine, I got to tell you, you give a lot of people a lot of, a lot of inspiration. I used to be very crafty. I gave it up a couple of years ago when I started to just focus on other things like, you know. I, I find it very clean. enjoyable. And there are times no, when I good. do nothing. There's times yeah. when I do, but then when I get into it and I start painting or whatever, I, I zone it. I blast my music and I go into a zone. And I would and have wine and like that lamp with the yeah. shells on it would be like the whole wall. Like I would start at the lamp, I'd have a bottle of wine, there'd be glue on the wall. So jeans yeah. with shells hanging yeah, off yeah, them. Yeah, it would be a whole different thing. Actually, that's a that's a next project. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. God. <laughs> so so, so Rob, Rob is here. On the yeah, couch. Rob has been with us for the last couple of weeks and he started, we really have to like make a chart. He started, surgery was Friday the 13th in April. Yes, I had a uh, bariatric so, surgery. And you are, so you're week probably five or six now. Uh, uh, in seven. And um, what, what have you lost? Um, I don't go on the scale till Friday, until Friday, so it's somewhere between 75, 80. 75, like 80 pounds. So we're going to have a really big celebration when he loses me. I'm trying, kids. I'm trying. Yeah, and, and you're doing a great job. What's the biggest change, do you think, in how you're feeling? Confidence. Really? Oh, I mean, I yeah. was at the dentist today. Want to see something? Want to see? The only reason Not I, really. the only way that the Novocaine shows is if I try to whistle. Watch. You can't whistle. Oh, that's funny. Well, that's like the. I'm that's not like even trying to do that. But uh, I asked out the dental assistant, so that's Dude. confidence. Did what? you really? A woman with her hands in my mouth, and, and I was like, somehow she said she wasn't married. I said, so when do you want to go to dinner? Uh, <gasps> she didn't want to get in trouble, so she didn't. Say yes. Oh, she couldn't because yeah. uh, oh, business and pleasure. But when the dental stuff, she goes, "Just so you know, I'm not cheap." I said, well, you know what? <laughs> Why don't you just wear a T-shirt that says I'm shallow? But we'll uh, see. We'll go. We'll not see. all. Listen, no girls are cheap. Uh, uh, uh. Talk to my brothers; they'll tell you all about it. Because mm -hmm. I told them a long time ago, if a girl tells you she doesn't want anything, she's F O S. And for those of you who don't know what that means, it's full of poop. So you want a girl that wants stuff. You want a girl that wants it. This is my for the boys section. You want this turned girl. into this somehow. You Rob, want, you want... <laughs> that's right, her finger, you is want it? a girl that has standards. You want a girl that has Absolutely. expectations. Absolutely. You want a girl that wants to be taken out. You don't want an easy that, peasy, that that you can go anywhere type of girl. Then she's a, then she's a, you know, it's easy. Anybody can have an easy girl. You want a hard girl. Want a girl. Well, I want a hard working gonna, girl with paint stained jeans, god right, damn it. That's right. And high gonna, heels. And high heels. That's going to suck the life out of you and make you nuts on a daily basis. <laughs> that's what you want. You live for that. That's it. That's you know? It. I mean, you, you, you need that in your life. You need that energy. But I think it's the confidence in general. You know, well, you walk different. Right? My weight loss was 76 pounds. So wow. we're, Absolutely. At, yeah, we're yeah, at, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. at the same, and, and I can... Totally agree with you on the confidence. Clarity thing. In, 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 con oh, in my concentration. Head? Oh my gosh, that's been a huge change. Wow. Really? Yep. 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 How did you even notice that though? 
What? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's just it. You can feel it. You can feel that you're a, a little bit more aware. You're brighter. Uh, somebody said to me, more your eyes are bluer, your, your skin, face is clearer. Your skin is so much better. I'm going to tell you that right now. It really is. <laughs> you, Definitely. I, I remember you. just feeling more open. Yeah. Just, just open. That's awesome. It's a great thing. You must, feel, like, you must feel with. like a big weight has been lifted off your shoulders. Literally. But I'm bummed. But I'm bummed. Now, I am very proud of you, and I can't wait to see what's your goal, or you don't have a goal? I'd like to do another, uh, I'd like to do another 70 something. Okay. Wow. That's good. Right. I don't look, my, I started out, my top fighting weight was 367. Wow. wow. That's a lot of so, people. That's when you were on April 13th. Uh, April 13th, really I was 361. Okay. Have you had any cravings for anything? A little bit. I, yeah, but you haven't given into it. I, you fill up. I have, uh, for anybody who didn't hear me explain this before, they took 75% uh, of my stomach and went, Just that's the procedure I had. So my stomach is a small pouch now, so I literally am full. Yeah, but you could have a small piece of pizza now. I'm not going there yet. I'm no. just, I'm basically still working my way, you know. As much protein as I can get. You're still yeah. healing from the surgery. Yeah, and, I mean, and they keep reminding me of that. You know, they always, I mean, you know. surgery's a big assault on your body. I mean, my, my husband's surgeon once said the body does not like to get cut into. We do it. Yeah. And we heal and do a lot of good with it. But the body revolts. Yep. And um, it, it really does take time to fully recover. It does. It does. So, so you have to be gentle. So do you feel. Um, do you, so you're really not practicing any discipline right now. You're pretty much, your body is disciplining you. People have gone totally off, off the rails, rails. At early. This point, early. They've made themselves sick until they stretch the pouch, even mm -hmm. early on. Wow. And then they continue. But I'm, um, yeah, don't do uh, I, hope I was up, I prepared uh, endlessly up here how, for this. How do you liken this journey with your other with yeah, the drugs and alcohol I'm, 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 you know, I'm, what kind of similarities I'm sober from drugs and alcohol and I feel so much better about myself <laughs> I do I know but no it, it felt very similar to me when I was preparing for the surgery it felt very similar to when I was getting ready to go into detox so I want to bring this up because it's a good subject for Christine and I to talk about before we go into something else but Christine doesn't she, she doesn't feel the same way about comedy as I do can we talk about the, the cocaine jokes and the other stuff that we saw mm -hmm. all right so anybody who knows me knows that I'm out of my freaking mind. There's not a lot I won't say, and there's not a lot I won't do. There's about a handful of things I don't really like to do, but I'm not gonna say them on the show because I have kids and they're in their 20s and my youngest one watches the show. So- Again, um, very long sentence, go ahead. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I can listen to any comedian, anything, and not get offended and not take it home with me, not be bothered by it. We had a comedy show here last week. One of the comedians was Terry McNeely. I find him to be absolutely freaking hysterical. I love his rants, I love his craziness. Um, and uh, he was throwing around the name Tyler. Oh, you know, your, your son's name is Tyler. My son's name is Tyler. I wasn't offended at all. But he said some things that Christine couldn't, she didn't like to hear it. And we were talking about it after the show. I don't know if that described your feelings. It's not about me not liking to hear it. He made what I consider to be, look, and we're just this talking modern, about this. This modern comedy maybe is not my thing. Uh, I like more uh, old-fashioned comedy, if you will, the classics, etc. But I don't mind sexual innuendo. I actually think it's fun and flirtatious, and I think there's a line between that and vulgarness. Um, I mean, you asked me, so I'm, no, I'm no, going to no. be who I am and say it. I think this is a really good um, discussion because and I it's really real life. did not like when he called. Um, disorders, and he called them diseases, so first of all, they're disorders, like ADD or ADHD, fake diseases. And as the parent of a handicapped child, I know I'm the serious one here, okay, but as the parent of a handicapped child, until you have watched someone you love struggle and suffer and try to fit into a world of people with that mentality, Keep it quiet. But can it's I, not. I'm sorry. It's not. But wait, wait, funny. wait. I just want. I just want to make a comparison. I know you wait. disagree with no, me no, and think no. I don't get it. I just don't like that you guys do this okay. shit while I'm on the couch. No, I had a friend of mine and you named them. No. Oh, yeah, I yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. But it's an okay yeah. to have an opinion because I'm gonna say I was just talking about having an opinion. Having an opinion. Having an opinion. I'm just saying. No, I think it's a good. I think it's a good topic because I was just talking about Kelly Ripa and how skinny she is and how she looks like she's on the verge of dropping, you know, passing out. And I'm saying I. I want to look like her so you know i'm kidding right like that's what i'm saying like i no i didn't know that you were kidding with that of course that. i'm kidding I you think i, I want, thought you, you wanted me that thing 
Well, I do want to be that thin, but I don't think she looks like she's going to drop dead any second. I think she just happens to be really thin. Like, I take it to the next level, and that's what I think comedy comedians do. And the reason why I was, I was really had a really nice conversation with Christine about it is because I was trying to show her the other side. Uh, that's all I was saying. Yeah, my mind's not going to get changed on that. Yeah, all right, so that's it. An so another comedian used the word retarded. You know, it's it's not funny. And I joked it's about cocaine, funny. and she, Christine, doesn't like that I joked about that. Like, you find that to be a line not to cross. Listen, I'm going to cross that line, and she's going to not like it. And me. I'm not. And, that, and, and that's what I like about being with Christine. I like that we are, are different. I don't want to be with people like me all the time. I'm boring after a while. I mean, give it, you know, 24, 26 years, but eventually I get boring. Do we need to talk, Rob? No, nope, I'm just being quiet. I mean, do we need to talk? Later. Okay, so anyway, I just thought it was, I think it's funny that, um, not funny, I think it's interesting that two people who are so different could be friends and, you know, and have, and share these different views. One of the things I love about my life is I have Jewish friends. One of my best friends is Jewish. I have Greek friends. I have a friend from Romania. Uh, Peter was dating a Jamaican girl. Very different. I love differences. I don't really like to be around Italian 45 to 50 year old women all the time. It's boring. So I, I like the differences. I view it as um, a welcome change. That's what I'm saying. We will be right back. Am I the only one that can talk about it like an upset subject without getting upset? Have you heard? Laura's neighbors save thousands of dollars on their property taxes by using Zap My Tax. But her husband filed with the other property tax grievance company. He'll never make that mistake again. Laura went to ZapMyTax.com and got the savings she deserved. Zap My Tax, saving Long Islanders money on property taxes for over 25 years. Look for us in your mailbox or call 631-889-5500 or you can sign online at zapmytax.com. Yeah, welcome back to the living room. We have got Rudy. I'm not Rudy. No, but so you're gonna introduce like him. We have Rudy Breedy with us today, and we're very fortunate to have him. Rudy is the host of Happy Hour at WHPC, which you can find Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. on 90.3 FM, or you can find it on iHeartRadio. Yes, you um, can. And Rudy is the self-proclaimed the living room super fan. I am a super Stop fan. Really? So we are very happy to have him on our couch finally. I'm very happy to be here with both of you. Can we go back a couple of the the thing? Why does one have so many shelves in their home? What is <laughs> well, that? <about? laughs> I need to know. What's that about? Um, I have spent several vacations in a place called Captiva Island, okay. which is off I the coast Staten of Staten Island. But all right, off <laughs> the coast of Florida. It, it's a lot. It, it's you could say Captiva is to Florida what Staten Island is to New York, okay. but it's way prettier. Okay. And it, it's Sanibel Island, Captiva Island. Sanibel is considered the shell capital of the world. Okay. And it is, the beach is literally littered with these shells. Gotcha. Littered. Wait, and I've gone there that, yeah, I, a, couple, <laughs> a couple of zip blocks every time I went and in the suitcase. Hoping I wasn't overweight. So people are collecting cans and you're like collecting shells? Like what's Everyone's going on? Everyone's collecting shells okay. on Captiva Island. That's it's amazing. Awesome. Everybody, Google have you images ever got, have of you ever Captiva gotten, like, Island. Stopped? Have they ever taken wow. out your suitcase? And yeah. take, no. I'm going to tell you right now. We were on a vacation. <laughs> you could <laughs> buy them in the in We were on a vacation. Okay. One of our friends got, like, I think they got the suitcase opened up. It was a whole thing coming home from somewhere. With yeah. shells? Carry on. She carry was carrying on, on a uh -huh. shell home from St. Martin, or we went sailing in some place, and she, they, they took it out. Did something happen to her? I forget what. Whatever okay. happened to her, she deserved because She was a bitch. <laughs> I got stopped in Hawaii, um, traveling from the Big Island to Kauai. It was uh, six months after 9-11, so security okay. was still very, very tight. All right. And um, we were there for 10 days, and it was a business. The first um, week was business with my husband. I had a lot of shoes with me, and one of my bags was all shoes. Okay. Apparently, that's a red flag. Because you're, like, smuggling <laughs> shoes and shells? I mean, oh, my no house. No shell. I didn't bring any no shells home okay. from Hawaii. Well, they, they saw this bag of shoes and pulled it. It was an outdoor airport. They pulled it off the conveyor belt, okay. and they took every shoe and wiped it with this little round white thing. Maybe they and my little Donna, in, in no, 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 my little Donna Karen sneakers set off alarm bells and the guys in camouflage and rifles came and I said, I'm the housewife from Massapequa. Stop <laughs> it. 
<laughs> they tested positive for explosive material. You had explosive I wore them on the volcano tour. Uh, oh my God! I had a fill out. You, you wore, wore them almost, on the volcano we tour after to the, they said they had explosive stuff. No, 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 on no, 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 no. I oh. had worn them on the Big Island oh, okay. when we did the volcano tour, and then we flew to Hawaii, Kauai gotcha. afterwards. And, and they tested positive. I that's ended up step. leaving my cute but little wait, I have, a really good, I have a really good clam story. Oh, you look fantastic, by the way. I do? Yeah. Botox. Thank you. Smooth? Is it really the Botox? It's, it's the Botox. It's the Botox. I mean, it is no, no, just, I just, she's just really smoothed out. I love it. Okay. Poof, I lost five years of my life. Now, like, if I can only I get mean, rid of the bat I may need to make an No, you look beautiful. Like, how many needles were coming out you at once? Like, it was like, honestly, I'm going to tell you right now, I, the guy came at me so quick, I don't even know what happened. One okay. minute I was like, look, I want to talk about having surgery in October. I okay. feel like my eyes, I could use, you know, and the next thing, he's like, well, you know, if I do a little of this, and I do a little of that, before I knew it, I had like seven years. I'm not it. doing it. I'm not like, doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I really did not intend for that to happen okay. at all. Okay. But that's what happened. And it's actually settling in now. I I do have a little s swelling, which he prescribed a little prednisone for. I haven't taken it yet because, although I've had the time to do everything for everybody else, I haven't made the time to do anything for myself. So I haven't got. Raise your eyebrows. Story of Let me see you raise your eyebrows. Oh, okay, good, good, no, <laughs> good. Okay. Cool. So you know, it's so funny. My husband didn't notice. My parents didn't notice. Okay. My business part partner didn't notice. I noticed. Nobody freaking notices. My son Trevor comes home from school. He's like, Ma, WTF? <laughs> what happened to your face? He goes, you look like you got a fish hook coming up. And I said, well, it's settling in, it's settling in. Okay. Nobody noticed. How long it's like, you ever ask a woman if she's pregnant? You never, ever do that. Well, it's no. funny that we're talking you about this because... You a big mistake if you yeah. do that. Or I've done that. One girl at work <laughs> came up to me. I've done that. I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. Lucille Roberts about 22 years ago. Oh, my God. Oh. And it was a bad move. I, mm. I tried to climb out of that hole so fast I could not get out. Okay. I had to discontinue my membership. I'm not even getting it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I was I was doing a run in Robert Moses Park, okay. and I saw these cute little shells on the beach, right? So I'm like, oh, how cute. I have to take them from my yard and put them out by yeah. the tree. So I grabbed these shells. I, I put them in my brand new Louis Vuitton sack. Okay. And lo and behold, a week later, I'm on my in-law's boat with my girlfriend, Allison, and we're in the boat, and I'm like, something smells in here. Oh Something God. smells in here. Oh Something my smells. Gosh. Lo and behold, there had clams in the shells. <gasps> I was running out the oh. inside of my brand new bag. Smelled oh, like wow. I can't even tell you. I was like ripping the bag apart. I'm like, it's coming from my bag! And it you was had all, a live clam. I had live clams in the bottom of my bag. Did you save Louie? <laughs> I saved Louie. You saved Louie? Okay. It was hilarious. It, it was touch and go. I had to okay. empty the whole thing out. Now I'm on a boat. I okay. have to do this. I'm looking okay. for something that's going to like whip up, you know, get rid of the smell. I'm powdering the thing like a baby wow. on the dock. Oh my God. I mean, if I would have whipped out a diaper wow. and just, you know, powdered That's it hilarious. up and diapered it, yeah. Hilarious. That was my shell story. And I really am a super fan, so I have been watching. Now, Christine, okay. I want to know, you said 70, how many pounds did you 76. Use? Okay, what was the very first thing that you wore when you felt like you had arrived? In terms of your weight loss, you know, like, th you, that's a big question. Well, did you take um, a thong out of the shop? Like, no, what I, I, I'm <laughs> not a thong person. I'd rather have a panty line than have a rubber band okay. up my dental okay. I like it. Okay, hey, listen. So, um, as I lost weight, okay. I mean, it was my original goal. I was about a size 14 when I started, and my original okay. goal was, if I'm a solid 10, maybe an occasional eight, I'll be happy. Okay. And as I hit those sizes, yeah. you know, I, I love shopping. I, of course, needed okay. to buy clothing. And as I hit each of these sizes, mm -hmm. I n thought, okay, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I'm really happy. I look okay. good in the mirror. I want to buy everything because I like the way all of it looks. Gotcha. And it never occurred to me that I would, even though I was continuing, continuing to work on this and lose, uh -huh. that I would actually be a smaller size. So I wasted a whole lot of money on tens okay. and eights and even so sixes for like that matter. So you didn't have like a dream matter. dress in like size No, I didn't. Uh, other okay. times in my life, I, okay. I did diet for the dress. Okay. Uh, did you but maybe this not time, have the confidence that you were going to get there? I, I just never dreamed. I have never been this size in my life. I, I, you know, This size? The size I am now. I'm Good wearing size four jeans. And I mean, to you. me, Isn't that, that wow. is... in high school? No. My wedding gown was a size 12. I never bought it. I, the smallest wow. size I ever remember buying, my grandmother got married when I was maybe 12 or 13, and I have okay. a clear memory. We went to this very fancy dress shop, okay. and um, I felt very grown up in that dress shop, and I have a very clear memory that the dress I bought was a size 8. So that's the smallest size I really okay. ever okay. remember being. Was the 14 so. your biggest? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's not yeah. a huge tubby-wubby. Like, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> did, did you just want to uh, be smaller? Or? You know, I used to always say, 
I'm, I wear great clothes, and okay. I look terrific. I, I'm comfortable with my size 14 now. Sometimes okay. you don't, I'm more know. Comfortable Sometimes you don't right. know there's yeah. a better life out yeah, there until you actually yeah. okay. achieve it, and then you're yeah. like, wow, I didn't yeah. realize. No. I'm, I'm amazing, pretty right? happy with the size okay. I am right now, and I never that. never dreamed wow. that I would well, be. Congratulations thank you. you. So much. Thank, so thank you for turning me on to gluten-free pizza. For those of you who don't know, they came and did my show, and we tend to have in-studio caterers. Hi, Frantoni's in East Meadow. And they, because you don't eat the gluten, as we call it, yeah. um, we got a gluten-free pizza. That was delicious. I, I thought it was really pretty good. good. Yeah, I was I think the I crust on that was maybe made of cornmeal, and I, I liked the flavor. I, I, didn't tell you. I didn't miss the gluten. I don't know, I, like, no. I didn't miss it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, gluten isn't something you miss. Gluten doesn't have a taste or yeah, anything. Yeah, I mean, and, I, was, I, I could have eaten that all night long. I, I could have, but in my mind, I was already set that I was going to Wendy's afterwards. Because yeah. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to work with her. <laughs> and, and the important thing is, my weight loss journey didn't start out as a weight loss journey this time at least Where were you it, going? it was it was about um, healing autoimmune disease oh um, and I stopped eating gluten dairy and sugar to you reduce had an symptoms disease? I have several autoimmune oh, diseases. oh yeah well if you were a super so, fan you'd know that I'm really to really. how many shows have you watched I had watched a bunch but I didn't realize that you had I knew you were yeah. clean and clean so, and, all that and, stuff and I that. felt better in under two weeks just just to catch you up a little yeah. bit and then started to lose and weight. Here it, she was, is. it was as if it's the easiest diet I've ever been on as far as weight loss goes because okay. it was as if I when I didn't have those things yeah. what wasn't taking as those things in, it was like my body just How shed hard this was weight. it to cut those things out though? The first two weeks were were kind of difficult. Okay. Though I ate plenty, I can't really say I was hungry. I think okay. it's more up here. Okay. Do you, you do want, you have to watch you know, yourself as a man? All the time. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Oh wait, 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 wait. Christine struggle. and I were having this conversation today about street cred. So I was saying that skinny people yeah. were thinner. I shouldn't say skinny because I don't consider myself skinny by any stretch of the imagination. You're skinny. You look great, though. I, I think I'm fit. I don't think I'm skinny. You are, okay, yes. I'll I'm give you fit. Okay. Um, but we were talking about it, and but I said... But the skinny team would take you. I've never... The skinny team would? I don't, yeah. I don't know. Um, I was saying that, you know, thinner people never get any street cred because we've never gained a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. I gained 60 pounds each pregnancy. Wow. So I was like 112 pounds when I got pregnant. I gained 60 pounds. I never lost the last 10. I, I gained another 60. So I was 182 pounds when I was pregnant with my second son. Wow. I'm 122 today. Well, wow. but, but, but I have to tell but, you something. But wait, no, people, uh, we were talking about it today. I was saying people always say to me, oh, you have a fast metabolism, you know, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, I struggle like you do every day. Yeah. Not struggle, but... And you work, as I okay. said, you work at it. You Every work day. to be fit, you work out, right. you eat healthy, you always have your entire life, you grew up eating healthy. Okay. So you work at it, and people, you know, it's. E I was one of them. Very easy to get into bad habits. Oh, yeah. And I had things you love, things. all I the things that I love. Mm -hmm. I smoke. But, you know, pregnancy, yeah, we I'm, a, I'm a couch. firm yeah. believer that your body gains what it needs. Because me, as a larger person, I mean, I was probably a size 12 well, when I got pregnant. Enhanced. Okay. Oh, I like that. Well, I was probably a enhanced. size 12 through most of my pregnancies, okay. and my biggest weight gain was 23 pounds, and I had eight and 10 pound babies. Wow. wow. My baby so, was six. Is um, I, no, listen, my I body didn't okay. mean to gain it. Yeah. And I ate ice cream, and, uh, and you know, so what, I don't know. What happened for me was I was 112 pounds when I got pregnant. I, I ate a cookie and I gained four pounds. So I was just like, what the hell? Just, it's a shit show. Let me just go with just it. Go. <laughs> Let me just embrace it. I'm glad I, I wasn't around for that. Uh, <laughs> you, you worry. It's true. I just want to ask Rudy a question because yes. I, I kind of Google stalked you I yesterday to, ju to just okay. learn a little bit about who okay. you are. Um, okay. And I see that you spent some time working for Best Buddies International. I did indeed. Could you please tell everybody about this organization? My sons have participated in it. I think it's a really sure. worthwhile Best Buddies organization. Sure. Best Buddies was founded by Anthony Kennedy Shriver, um, and it's an organization that pairs children, in particular teenagers and high school, middle school kids, who have developmental disabilities with their non-disabled peers. So, for example, they'll set up a club at school, and the students that have the disabilities will, you know, through programs and activities, eat lunch with the kids who don't have disabilities, or they'll go on class trips. And the idea is for them to have a buddy, a best buddy, a friend. And so I've seen that on Facebook. Really kind of integrate mm -hmm. them into quote unquote the, the mainstream, so they don't feel back. as uh, exercises. I love yeah. that. It's a wonderful yeah. organization. Have you heard of your pals? I have. Similar? Okay. Yeah, similar, similar, very similar. Okay. Best yeah. Buddies is a non 501c3 nonprofit, correct? correct? Yep. Yeah. It's headquartered in Miami, Florida. That, that is it. absolutely yeah. awesome. My sons have participated. Yeah. My youngest started out as a participant and ultimately became a buddy. Yeah, oh, that's uh, very awesome. Nice. So, uh, great, great yeah, it's a, a really great organization. We will be right back. Rudy's going to stay with us on the couch, and we are going to have Judy Wolski with us to talk about working for La and all that goes with Ooh. that. Come on, Judy. See you in a minute. Why don't I move down? Hi, I'm Roger. And I'm Steve. 
and we, we own, own this, this house, house together. together. Zap My Tax was so successful with our tax grievance. We saved over $1,700 in our first year alone, but now we're signing up again. In fact, we are so happy with Zap My Tax, we decided to save even more money and use Zap My Insurance as well. Zap My Tax and Zap My Insurance. Two great choices and two great ways to save money. Welcome back to the living room. I am Lori Fay, and today with us we have Judy Wolski, who is um, many things to me, many, many, many things. Um, she takes care of me on a daily basis. She's there for me when I'm down. She's there for me when I'm happy. She watches my back 24 seven. I, I honestly live a better life because I have her working with me. Oh, that's Thank you, lovely, Lori. That's yeah, nice. that's the truth. That's no BS because um, if I didn't, I'd be twitching out of my skull. <laughs> so uh, how many years ago, Jude? Did Nine have? years. So nine wow. years ago, Judy. Did you boy, know what you were getting into? She had no. Clue. I thought it was for six weeks. <laughs> so, and so it's nine years later. Nine years ago, Judy's um, Judy's boyfriend, who was doing some work with us, called me and said, "My girlfriend um, is retiring her from her position in the city, and she's driving me crazy, and she needs to work. Do you have any, you know, positions open?" And I said, "I really don't." right now and he said um, well if anything comes up you know let me know and I said okay what's her name he said Judy and my best friend's name is Judy so I am a, a true believer in everything happens for a reason and there are signs and things are coming at me from the universe because you know that's the way it works even though I read something today that says that's not the way it works but anyway lo and behold I called her and she came on I said look I have something it's a project it's for about six weeks I can't promise you anything after that boom nine years later so and it's been um, a wonderful experience every single day. No, oh, she's so okay. full of it. She's <laughs> FOS. So, so we really do have a great time, but it's it's a marriage. It's kind of like you know, Peter and I have been working together. Um, PC and I have been working together for a long time, and I say it all the time. We fight all the time. I spend all this money, and we're not having sex. It's a marriage. We fight all the time. You're spending all my money, and we're not having sex. It's a marriage. <laughs> So uh, it's a marriage because it's give and take, and Absolutely. we do battle, man. We do battle, right? Not not so much recently. Not recently, but we have in the past. We had our ups and downs, but that's what happens when two women who are strong-headed get together, and you know they each have their own opinions and they fight. But we always come out with a solution. And it's about and the work. It's about it's the work. It's never about, about work. it's never about no. like, oh, you know, you came in late today. That never right. comes into the equation. No. It's always about how we view the system should work or, you know, something um, And there's a respect. Without a total a respect. And Lori <laughs> is a total mentor. She will teach and teach and teach. I did not and pay her to say this. No, and that is one of the most positive things that I can say about her. So she is always trying to teach me to know that she's going to give it to me and be confident and then she can do something else. And I wind up doing the same thing with our employees too, It's just take everything away from me. Where most of the time, women will beat up women that they work to with. To keep working. To keep, right, to I don't know, keep them it. lower. Mm -hmm. And where she just tries to build you up. And it's a wonderful experience and it works two ways because she's doing it to me and I'm doing it to the other woman in the office. And the men also. And that's why it works. And, and, I, and I, in particular, you work for me and you work for Peter. I mean, she, you work directly with me and, you know, a little bit mm -hmm. for Peter and with Peter. What, what is the main difference you would think um, between the two of us? Not, not necessarily that he's nutty in a different way and I'm nutty, but like man, female kind of way. Like I think working, I've worked in a very large corporation. I work for women um, who basically just really are like the worst and they are just totally belligerent they don't they're not compassionate they don't understand women's emotions and I think a lot of men also don't understand women's emotions so it's very difficult you know from to work in that kind of environment I think working with a woman who feels emotionally mentally attached to you 
you can get more done than and, working and with a man. It's funny because I asked the other girls in my office, not all of them, a handful of them, um, to tell me what the differences were between working for me. And, and you know, I don't mean anybody works for me like they work for me, but let's face it, I override them because I'm signing their check. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I don't really think you and I have right. that relationship. I, you know, I, I, I am open to everything that you say all the time. It doesn't, you know, I, I, I'm, ultimately I can override it, whereas you really can't override me, even if my right. decision is wrong. But, um, they all said that. Women are better to work with women in many aspects. They understand the, the, the life priorities, having to work, having to ha go home and take care of their child. It's funny because when I hired my first woman, one of the things I said to her was, you know, welcome to the, to the ring. And, um, you know, I knew she could juggle and I knew she could be a part of that game. And I think, like, when you have a man who's not juggling all that, I wanted to get in with this into this with Rudy, because you also, you know, manage other males and females, right? So it's different. Do you understand the same things I understand? Do you understand when a woman has to leave because she's got to take her kid to the doctor? Or is that like find somebody else you don't have to leave? I find, and I tend to be, and I'm lucky one of my coworkers is here. Um, in general, I think that people are people, and I think that everyone has something. And to me, life happens. So whether it's your kid, mm -hmm. your mom, your dog, Everybody's got something that they care for, so I'm, I try to be as empathetic as I can to all of that. I like I, that. I was curious, though, Judy, if you could change anything about Lori's um, That was one of my style, questions! What would it be? That was one of my oh, questions! sorry! No, I love it. Go ahead. I, you know, in all honesty... Hold oh, no, on, no, you already I, got your bonus. Go I, ahead. I don't think I would. Okay. I really think, you know, I, I've been in the workforce for 50 years. I've worked for both men and women, okay. and this is probably one of my most rewarding work relationships wow. that I had. Oh, and I'm not okay. just saying that just to I like... Well, yeah. I can think of a few things I can. <laughs> <laughs> I but was waiting for, for that me, piece it really is. Yeah. And I feel I could be as open with her as I want to be. Mm -hmm. I could not be that way with any of my man bosses okay. because I think that they always felt like if I came in with a problem, it was like they were talking to their wife and they didn't want to deal with mm -hmm. it. They were at work. They were focused. You, you know, feel that way with me? Business. Am I that way? No, no, well, you you're because you're not a man. <laughs> 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 and that is true. Thanks. Thanks. Wow. You see, it's really well, not a man. What I find really interesting is your ability to speak like that to a boss. So, right. you know, because I we've think that's not something I, I yeah. ever yeah. felt with We've a been boss. together a long time. I understand that, but that, oh. I don't know that I ever felt that I could be able to to joke in that right, manner right. with a boss. Well, you know what's um, really yeah. good? Like, we, we tend to do some uh, team building things together and we go away for weekends together as a group. And one of the things I love about working with the girls is, and I do have a male, a young male that works for me, and he was the one that I would say had the biggest problem with this, but what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So I had to tell him, look, we're going away for a weekend. We may be crazy. Monday morning, you're my bitch. Yeah. There's no line, you know. Right. They went back to work, gotcha. baby. Listen. I hate to say this. What? We're done. They, they, oh, poof! We're an done. hour. It's gone. Judy's so gonna come week. back. We're gonna hold hot topics. Next, next week is an amazing show. Rudy is coming back and he is Woo. producing our whole show. I can't even tell you the lineup because it's too much. And Rob had enough of me tonight. Um, <laughs> Terry McNeely, I love you. See you next week. Bye.